if I had to describe to someone what the pink agave was, it's almost like they walked into like a fun Mexican restaurant and or, or actually let me take that back. It's almost like a twenty three year old white girl walked into <laughs> a fun Mexican restaurant and was like, I wanna do this. I could do this. <laughs> and then they just opened up a spot, play Drake music all night long <laughs> and like put French fries in burritos. <laughs> it's like what what is this place? <laughs> Hey yo, what's up? Welcome back. What's happening? Episode twenty nine. Twenty nine of the Who F and Knows. The podcast. Sammy Knight edition. Sammy Knight edition. We're always on the same wave- wavelength. I love it. Or the Kyrie Robinson edition. No, no shout no. out to him. No, Sammy Knight all day. What well, is day. Sammy Knight? But also, I like the Kyrie Robinson. Yeah, official podcast of. I got fucking nothing. People who are always unprepared. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. That is about the most accurate one we've ever had. <laughs> Shout out us. Um we 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 called called attention to this once before, but um we never really plan ahead for this stuff, right? Like day of Dave texts me, Hey, I don't have anything and I'm like, Okay, well I'll figure some shit out. I normally throw three or four topics on the notepad and then we just kinda wing it from there. Tonight we're full go. We have nothing. We are literally just winging the shit out of this. So you know, buckle up. Maybe that's the problem. I wait until the day of to tell you I have nothing. <laughs> I probably don't even have so, to tell you anymore. You just you no, just I know. Just, I just know at this point. And to be fair, and there there's plenty we can talk about. But to be fair, Mardi Gras passed, right? And you have a a child on the way. Things are getting hot. <laughs> the countdown there. is on. <laughs> yeah, the countdown is on. We don't know what we're gonna do next week because it's officially scheduled. Yeah. Um. But Mardi Gras just passed, so mm-hmm. that's that's topic number one. Screw it. Oh. I know you don't do Mardi Gras, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. I, I did Mardi Gras. What I was gonna say, what did you do? Explain to me your your deep gras. Do you believe? First of all, do you believe in deep gras? Do you know what that is? No. Okay. You want to explain? I don't. I actually Some hate people? it. Um, oh, okay. So deep gras is the time, and I could be wrong. I don't know if it's Saturday through Tuesday or if it's Thursday through Tuesday, but it's essentially like like the height oh. of Mardi Gras, where like. You're just full go. You're not sleeping. You're probably getting wasted every day. You're eating like crap. If I ever, and you're just hoping you make it out alive. If I ever do that, kill me. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not one <laughs> for that. Um, I think it's nonsense. I actually think it's for um, for out of towners who like to pretend they're from here. But that's a whole other rant. Actually, I have a I have a thought. Now that I'm going to make a lot of enemies on this one. <laughs> I'm going to make a lot of enemies on this. Clip it. Clip it. I feel like. I feel like. The people that go hardest for Mardi Gras, you know, just the people that are like balls to the wall, like all in. I feel like they're not even from here. I feel like they're transplants who moved here 10 years ago and they're just like, oh, this is how you do New Orleans. This is how you be a New Orleanian. I'm going to go crazy for Mardi Gras. I got a lot of family that has gone hard, like held down the spot on St. Charles for the entire weekend for years, like 20 years plus. And they, that, I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. And they're all, like, shalmation to the core. All right. Okay. But well, maybe I'm maybe my take is wrong. But first of all, well, why? with with any take, it could be true. But there, you know, it's just because you say you feel like those people are a certain type of people. You're not necessarily meaning everybody. Of course, there's always a handful that are are like that. Like I saw Devin was out there every day. Oh, and yeah. we know Devin is. Is as authentic well, as it yeah, comes. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. That's true. That's true. That's fair. Maybe I'm maybe I'm talking out of my ass here. Call me out for it. It's fine. Maybe we are the outcast here. <laughs> there, you know, it's funny you say that. I <laughs> I didn't rant hard enough about how much I I don't like Mardi Gras last podcast. I mean, I did. Like, I ranted a little bit. We didn't even clip that. We didn't even put that out there. I w- I'll be honest. I would have taken you as a person that enjoys Mardi Gras. So, the reason I'm I'm bringing this up right now is I, last podcast I literally was talking about why I hated it. 
I had someone inviting me every day, Wednesday through Friday, and I just kept shooting them down. And then finally Friday, I just went on a rant about how dumb it was to go out there. And like, I just, I don't even remember everything I said. I could probably pull it up and read it. Um, shat all over it. And then <laughs> Friday afternoon, my cousin hits up my wife and she's like, Hey, we have, uh, my uncle, my godfather actually, um, got two passes to, uh, his company had an event on Bourbon street. I was at the Royal Sinesta. They had a balcony the day of Endymion. Um, they're like, you know, free food, free alcohol. You and you guys are both invited, you know, come hang out with Sean and I, my uncle's name is Sean. Um, and I knew in that moment that like, I wasn't going to turn it down, (laughs) but like everything in me and leading up to that Saturday, I had completely shat all over Endymion and any option of going. And not only did I go, but I went to fucking Bourbon Street. Mm. So take that for what it's worth. Yuck. <laughs> take that for what it's worth. I'll tell you what, though. I had a blast. Well, was, yeah. That's the, that's the thing with Mardi Gras, right? There's, like, everybody has, so, some people are built to do Mardi Gras, like you were saying, all weekend long and just go hard. And then other people are just built to do it like the quiet way we did it at the i mean i don't want to say smaller parades because the medry parades are definitely not small parades but it's not it's a smaller celebration i guess is a is a way to put it than what you would get going to new orleans and doing zulu and whatever less crazy for for sure but it's so like there's there's a way for to do mardi gras that you can enjoy it to me i mean like you you went to Metairie. Did you, you had the nice, like a nice setup where you could go to the house yeah. every so often. Like that's perfect. That's yeah. the way to do Mardi Gras for me. We went to Courtney's um, mom's office, so we just stu- stood outside his office, and then we had to go inside, cool off, get some drinks, yeah. bathroom, just went right in the office. That's the way to do Mardi Gras for me. Yeah, I so two thoughts actually. Um, it depends if we're talking Mardi Gras day or if we're talking everything else. Yes, I did go to I did go to Metairie for Mardi Gras day. We had a house right off the route, and we've done that for years. It's just been a tradition because my wife has a family member. Her, her grandma lives literally a block from the route right there. So um, it's always it's always nice, super family slow, like family oriented, very slow, relaxing. This year, yes, there were a lot of families, but holy shit, I, this year I'm talking like ten rows deep. Like it was like being at yep. Endymion at the height of Endymion, like it, it was, it was crazy. The only difference was it was a lot of like families as opposed to being around a bunch of like drunk, you know, young twenties or, or kids that are drunk. Yeah. Um, that was the only major difference, but it was kind of crazy. It caught me off guard. Mm. Um, I haven't done the Metairie parades in a long time. Yeah. Well, I, that's the only one I ever go to. That's the other, other part of that thought that I was going to say, I said two things. Um, if I'm going to parades, I don't go to Metairie parades to be completely honest. And that's probably a big reason why I was just kind of like shitting all over Mardi Gras. Cause like, I don't want to go to new Orleans for a parade right now. I just don't feel like dealing with yeah. the people. I don't feel like dealing with the traffic. I don't want to park. I don't want my freaking window getting busted out. Say, you got a new like, car. We don't need the windows. Yeah, busted that, out. <laughs> those are the thoughts I'm having. Um, so when we went to Berman, we, we Ubered, like we parked in Metairie and Ubered. I was like, all right, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like I'm not going to a Metairie parade at all unless it's Mardi Gras day. I like the Metairie. I see. We that's all I used to do when we would go to. I mean, say all we used to do. We would do Endemion. Honestly, we probably did Endemion Bacchus like every other year, maybe when I was doing parades. But we would always go to Metairie parades. It just seemed maybe it was, they were just easier to get to then, and they weren't as crowded. Like you could go on certain stretches of vets and be like no, like one person deep. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um. So we'd go right there. And if I if I were to go now, I think I would do the same thing. Only because it's literally just a hop, skip, and a jump across the lake. You could literally park right there, at lakeside, walk to the route. Yeah, yeah get right back on the causeway, come avoid home. Avoid traffic, park. Yeah. If you have a place to be, you're fine. Like it's good. Well, so what did what did you do though? Uh, we just caught the little little Covington parades they do downtown. Um, there's some floats, not not like huge floats, little single duck single decker floats. There's a little jeep parade that goes first. Um, and then it's like an 18 float parade that just goes downtown. Got That's out cool. there at That's like fun. 9 a.m. because they closed the streets off. It started at 10. We were right at the front. We were out of there by 12:30, maybe. And then they do. Uh, I don't actually know what they call it. 
but it's like a family grawl kind of thing at the trailhead where they got live music playing. They got a bunch of food trucks out there. See, that's fun. You can go. Yeah. That's we didn't, fam- we didn't do that afterwards because my son was like half asleep leaving the parade, so we just went home. It was, I tell you what, though. I had more trouble getting home from a Covington parade. And uh, you know where downtown is. Like, Well, you've never been to my house, but my house is like right there. Like yeah. literally two minutes away from downtown. And it took us no shit an hour from downtown to my house because I don't know what was going on. I don't know if they were like the parade, like loop back around or something, but we just sat there, literally drove through a graveyard to get <laughs> to another street. I was like, this is, this is terrible. I don't ever want to do this again. <laughs> I told my wife, I was like, please don't go into labor right now. My son's going to come out as a demon if we go into labor in a graveyard. <laughs> Sounds riveting. Oh, man, it was terrible. Um, How I don't have, like, four flat tires after that is beyond me. <laughs> that's fun. Uh, no, I, we we actually had a really interesting Mardi Gras day as well. Like, yes, it was in Metairie. Yes, it was it was crowded. But even outside of the parade itself, shit, got, shit was weird. I, I tweeted, I was like, man, I had a weird start to Mardi Gras day. Like, within, first of all, the parade started later than normal. It, was, it normally starts at 10. So, like, normally you're out of there by, like, 2. Um, wasn't starting until noon. So, we get out there at, like, 9 30 10 o'clock i pop my first beer and i'm like oh shit the parade's not till noon it's gonna be a long day um but walk outside of the door of the house we're staying at and there's a, a mid-40s man big guy sick like six three probably 400 pounds he's a big guy um he just randomly hits the ground and i'm like oh shit and then he's like out like hit the ground out i'm like oh fuck and there's like a crowd of like 20 people we all go running up to him pick them up it's disgusting there's like not to get too vulgar but there's like blood dripping everywhere i'm covered in blood picking this big dude up like just a wild start to the day he just passed out don't know why he said he was a little lightheaded was taking a break from walking and uh fell down i don't know it was a weird start to the day then we get to the route right after that cops are coming through you know they always come through in the beginning and like just kind of clear the street there's a guy on a motorcycle um he stops to hug a lady that's next to us and um, as he's hugging her, he just, like, loses his balance while he's on the bike. Bike's running, and it, it just wipes out. Bike, lays the bike down, and as as the bike's going down, he tries to catch it. Whiskey throttle, you know what I mean? So my first thought is this bike's about to take out this whole fucking crowd. Because, like, he's just, Vroom, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, this is going to be horrible. Um, thankfully, that didn't happen. But uh, the bike the bike killed, took him probably 30 minutes to get it running again so the parade hasn't even it hasn't come yet but it's already stopped and it's just this dude's like embarrassed out of his mind um and there's this idiot a one group down that's just like yelling at the cop and i'm thinking the whole time like i'm gonna watch somebody get beat up like <laughs> this is gonna be awful i'm gonna have so many stories from this um it was wild it was a wild start to the day but and i saw pistol pete Oh, that's cool. Yeah, did you see that? No, I Dude, did not see that. <laughs> here's another rant. What is it with guys? This dude was in his 50s probably. But what is it with guys wearing full-on NBA uniforms out in public? <laughs> he's got a Pistol P jersey. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I realize he's also got the matching shorts. And I'm like, why are you wearing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know. We had this conversation before about how you don't think anybody. Was it you? Said nobody should wear a jersey ever no that's not me but i i I understand the argument i um i think it's i don't see i don't think there's ever like a place for like nba jerseys really like it depends on what you're doing like obviously if you're going to a game all those rules are out the window wear whatever you want um i just think it's it's weird when people just go like we would go to just go out and people would just be out in NBA jerseys. Not even with like, you know how people wear like the T underneath it and it looks okay. Like you're just out in an NBA jersey. It's weird to me. I don't know why. It just looks weird. Maybe it's because I can't pull it off and it's just weird. But like baseball jerseys, I think are, are super fashionable. Like you can make baseball jerseys work with in a lot of different situations. Yeah. I think it's, so I, I have I have two thoughts. Um, I think it's the time we live in, first of all, because there was a point. Of course, in history, of course. where people were rocking of basketball course. jerseys, yeah. no, one hundred percent. It was a thing. Yeah, it was a whole thing. Um, 
I can remember going to school for dress down day, and if you weren't wearing a basketball jersey and some oversized jeans, like one hundred percent. I used to like I had a lot of jerseys, and I just can't even tell you to. I've completely made the switch from jerseys yeah. to polos, t-shirts, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. go ahead. I don't know. I try to. I try to be fashionable in general, Not but me. um, <laughs> but no baseball jerseys. I get it. But no, for me, um, I do wear basketball jerseys. But there's only one occasion you will catch me in a basketball jersey, and it's not even at a game. I mean, maybe I'll wear it to a game, but it's not even a thought for me normally. Um, the beach. Yeah. Like, go okay. to the beach. Instead of wearing a tank top or something, I just buy some random obscure basketball jersey, and I'll rock that at the beach. Yeah. Like, I have an Iverson jersey that I love taking to the beach with me. I have a Kobe <laughs> All-American jersey from, like, high school. Well, it's, like, essentially, it's essentially wearing a tank top. Yeah. Is all it is. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that, for sure. But we would go to, like, we'd go to Hangout Fest, and that would be one place where i would wear i could see that yeah where you, you wear a basketball jersey i'd wear baseball jerseys just like unbuttoned you know it's i don't i i'm just not a big fan of uh wearing jerseys out in public i guess yeah except for baseball jerseys but that's something new for me like i never used to wear baseball jerseys i did it for a stint when i worked in baseball i wore, I wore yeah. a lot of baseball jerseys all the time but I, I don't really do that anymore i do have one sports topic if you want to jump into that while we're talking basketball a little bit here go ahead did Nate McMillan accomplish what P. Mar- P. Carmichael was trying to do all season? Do you know what I mean when I ask that question? Get himself fired? Yes. Maybe. Did you hear? Did you hear the story? No, I have of, no idea. What tra- I know so he I, got fired. That's I, about all I know. I don't know the details, but apparently, in the weeks leading up, maybe even months leading up to him being fired, he asked to step down multiple times, and they told him no. So then apparently his lineups got kind of weird. The team started underperforming. And then what do you know? He gets fired. I love it. So do you think he intentionally got fired? <laughs> I'd have to say yes. If that's what if that's what happened, then I'll say yes. I think it's hilarious. I love that so much. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. I didn't know if you knew about that. No, not, I didn't read any. All I saw was he got fired, and I, I just didn't care. I was like, okay, he got fired. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is like the Hawks haven't been great yeah. for a while now. But they've been okay. But, um, yeah, no, I thought it was hilarious, and that was my first thought. I was like, man, Pete, you got to take you gotta take notes, man. Be worse. You know what? I don't think Pete wants to be fired anymore. Because if he did, he would not be sticking around this year. <laughs> To step down, yeah. I think he can't like he just can't leave. Honest to God, I thought that was that was the hope I had at the end of the year. It was like he would just be like, "All right, this didn't work. Goodbye." Well, it's it's an interesting dynamic too because I, I have a thought now. Hearing that Nate McMillan tried to step down and they told him no, how does that work? No, no I'm stepping down. Yeah, like, like you're not gonna make me stay. How does that work? Nah, you can't quit. What the what do you what do you mean I can't quit? I don't know. Maybe there's like something in his contract where he gets a bonus if he's let go a certain way or something. I have no idea. But you're right. Like if I, I imagine trying to go into your job tomorrow, being like, I think I'm gonna quit. Yeah. And your boss is like, I don't think so. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> no, I think you're gonna stay stick around. That's like uh, <laughs> back in the there was like some show where they would talk about like trying to break up with with your ex or break up with your <laughs> girlfriend or like we're gonna break up. Nope, I don't think so. <laughs> no, not happening. You're sticking around. <laughs> You're going to love me forever. <laughs> That's it. Oh, man. I was trying to see how long we've been talking. Who knows? We, this is a ride, man. 17 I minutes. Have, I, no, you're good. Well, I have plenty of stuff. That's what, I was, that's what I was saying. I did jot some shit down. Actually, I didn't jot anything down. I, I found something. Hold on. So, we can play a game. Oh, I love games. <laughs> So I was looking up earlier. I was like, man, what the fuck are we going to talk about tonight? When I said earlier that I was just going to ask you a bunch of questions and that was going to fill up the 45-minute slot. What the fuck was on your phone? I was like, like, maybe I should come up with some questions. Um, So I looked up icebreaker questions, which I normally hate. But I found a section of them that says awkward, weird, (laughs) or fun icebreaker questions. (laughs) Oh, man. We're playing a game. Here we go. (laughs) All right. <laughs> Jesus. These are all terrible. Uh, what's the weirdest food you've ever eaten? Mm. The weirdest food I've ever eaten. See, all right. I hate when you do this to me because I've never, I feel like I'm the most boring person on earth because I don't have anything off the top of my head. Um, So weird to who? Because to us, 
like gator is not weird. I was going to say that. I was going to say this isn't a fair question for someone who lives in Louisiana because we definitely eat a lot of shit. If you told somebody outside of like the Cajun area that you ate gator, you think they'd be like, why? <laughs> like, <laughs> Probably. But you could say the same about like crawfish. Like, yeah, on- honestly, yeah. like. You fuckers eat something that comes out of the ground. <laughs> Why? Uh, dude, I don't know. I don't have anything that honestly like jumps out to me. That's the thing, like nothing I, that I'm I mean, you can tell just from the time you've known me that I don't eat I don't venture out yeah. in food a lot. So I I don't think I've really eaten anything weird. But also like if you eat something like pretty often. Is it weird to you anymore? Yeah, like, it's, it's not, not weird, weird to you. That's the hardest thing. I'd have to like name stuff and you'd have to tell me, but like I said, is there anything you've ever tried? Like just one time and like, "Ah, I guess I'll try it. I don't know. Like just, you thought was a little, well, I have one that comes to mind and people will kill me for this. It's delicious. But like for whatever reason, like eating turtle soup is just kind of weird to me. I know it's the same concept as like everything else we just named, but like, I don't know. Like I picture a little cute, Little box turtle with like su- smooth skin. Thinks he's out here eating Franklin. And I'm like, yeah, like I'm like, oh man, like I don't know, this is weird. Uh, um, or like rabbit. Like I've eaten rabbit. I never had I rabbit. Know, like I'm not a fan of rabbit. Um, I don't know. Like I, I was kind of. I thought duck was a little odd the first time I had it. Not like that. I thought it tasted odd because I love duck. But like the first time somebody was like, "You want to try some duck?" I was like. No, <laughs> like, no, I don't. I don't want to try any duck. <laughs> and then I finally had it. And I was. Uh, it's like, okay, dude. I had. You like it? Fuck yeah, I love duck. There's uh, so I don't even remember the first time I had it. I think it was just like, I don't. know. It was at a baseball tournament. Uh, we had it, but the best of duck I've ever had. I think it's Irene's in the French Quarter. Oh hell yeah! Shout out Irene's, dude. They had this raspberry glazed duck. Okay. Amazing. Amazing, like probably top ten foods I've ever had I in think, my life. I think I was with somebody else who got that <laughs> once. You, like you, and it's not even like a guarantee that they have it every night when you go because I guess it's one of the they don't. It's you know super fancy restaurant, so limited menu. Right, right. And uh, they just run out. Whoever I was with got it, and I tried it. That was the thing. Like I thought duck was weird enough for me to be like, I don't know that I want to order or, like pay fifty bucks for a duck for duck and not know if I'm gonna like it. But dude, that was delicious. And then Walk Ons has a uh, duck and uh, duck and sausage gumbo, which yes. is pretty good. Yes, always good. I love any any like chicken and sausage, turkey and sausage, duck and sausage. Like, yeah, I love that shit. I'm not a seafood gumbo guy. Are you a seafood gumbo guy? Uh, I'll eat it, but it's not not my favorite. That's like one of the few places that I'll have like I like I like seafood because um, like it just absorbs all the, the flavor of everything else so um yeah i'll eat some seafood gumbo but if i have my choice it's chicken and sausage i feel you all the time go to turkey and sausage after thanksgiving always fucking just like turkey just the leftover i'm telling you man that sounds good telling you man i think like so like a popular food that uh outside of like king cake obviously um sushi not for me not for me buddy and you know what it's the texture you know it's the texture First time I had sushi, I was at, uh, shout out to Sogo and Slidell, fantastic hibachi. Um, I got some sushi. I don't even know what it was. Whoever I was with convinced me to try it. I I put it in my, it was a crawfish roll. Okay. I put it in my mouth, walked straight to the bathroom, spit that shit out. I tried. Like, I was like, this is, I cannot, I can't chew this. I can't do anything with this. A crawfish roll, first of all, is not the best way to start with okay, sushi. Okay, well, you, I don't know anything about this. This is what they gave me, and I tried it, and I said, nope, can't do it. It's also, I, li- I like, I really enjoy sushi. It's also not really good. Like, I, in my opinion, like, I don't really care for a crawfish roll. It is fully cooked. So, like, you, like anybody that's, like, weirded out about, like, raw fish, like, there's a lot of rolls that are fully cooked. You are never going to get me to eat raw fish. Um, not, so, that maybe that's a weird ever, thing, <laughs> a weird thing. that I've, e- I've eaten plenty of sushi with, like, different... Honestly, sometimes I'll look at it, I'll be like, man, I don't even know what the hell I just ate. <laughs> I don't. A good answer for this, I don't, I don't eat them, but 
if you told anybody, like most people that you eat raw oysters, they would probably be like, that's fair. That is disgusting. Like yeah. you show somebody a picture of a raw oyster and be like, yeah, I eat this. Yeah. My wife will not. <laughs> that's, not that's, that's, there's no chance I ever try. I ever eat a raw oyster. I, do you, are you like that? Where it's like, there's a lot of things I don't eat strictly because of how they look. Like they may taste great, but if something doesn't, like a raw oyster may may be delicious, but I look at it and I'm like, I just can't. Like I cannot eat that. If I can be honest, I eat raw oysters. I do not think a raw oyster is delicious. You know what makes a raw oyster delicious? You put it on a freaking cracker and you put the you put like the the horseradish sauce. What the hell is it called? Cocktail sauce on yeah. it. Yeah, a little hot sauce maybe. Like that's what makes it. I don't. You don't even have to go to like to that extreme for me for like raw oysters. Like avocado, I can't eat avocado because the like the green. The, something about the way it looks, I'm like, nope. Guacamole, same way. It's just the way guacamole looks. I'm like, nope, I can't do that. <laughs> it's just not for me. I also love guacamole. That's why I'm so we picky. Can't go, we can't go to dinner together, man. Oh, we, just, we could. It's not going to happen. Here's the, here's the thing with me, though. Like, it, when I was younger, like, I would not try anything. There was no chance you were getting me to try anything. At least now, for the most part, if you get something and you're like, try this. Like, if I told you I don't like it and you're like, try this, I'll at least try it again. Because I understand that as you get older, your palate changes and whatever. So I'll at least try stuff now. And if I don't like it, I don't like it. But, yeah. What's what's your favorite? Well, now we're going to get in. We're just going to talk food this whole podcast. Hope y'all are cool with that. Um, what is your favorite restaurant? We can we can keep it native since we both live in, since we both live on the North Shore now. We can keep it native to the North Shore. I'm new over here, so I don't really know a lot of spots. Or we can oh, just yeah, say no, in I'm, general. I mean, tough for me for to say the North Shore too because – like we've only been here three years, I just don't. Uh, we haven't we haven't really gone out to eat over here because we've been so like since we've moved over here, we've dealt with COVID and yeah. a and a newborn, like once one newborn, so we just never really got to go anywhere. Um, so like North Shore is tough for me. Uh, I don't know because it's like well, I'll tell you right now, our favorite restaurant is Chimes, like. It's nothing spe- like nothing Easy. crazy. Easy. I like, love chimes. I get it. You get there ain't nothing on that menu that isn't good. Right. You want to go drink? They got good drinks. If you like beer, they have any beer you could want. Right. Chimes is awesome. I love chimes. And then just like vibes. Yeah. Is great. Just overall though, like Houston's was my favorite restaurant. Really? I me I think it's just cuz my mom, it was my mom's favorite restaurant and we used to go maybe once a month. And I think I just loved I loved going to Houston's. I don't know why. Never, when I would go, never got anything special. As a kid, just chicken tenders and fries. But they had the best chicken tenders and fries. You know, it's it's interesting because when you said that, I I flashed back to, I don't I I I don't know if I could pick a favorite restaurant. There's so many restaurants I love. I mean, and are we talking sit down? Are we just talking just general? Like like Blue Oak is phenomenal. It's not like a sit down restaurant. Fucking phenomenal. Um. If we're just talking over here, I'm thinking uh, Maribo or how you say that. Like it's a pizza joint, but, but yeah. like it's it's great. Um, and sometimes your favorite restaurant isn't even like the best food. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was gonna say. Um, like I love Jack Rose. It's decent food. I like their drinks. Like uh, if we're talking New Orleans, um, the Chloe. I like the the atmosphere. Um, there's all these different places in New Orleans. Um, Giacomo's. And then um, there's different times of day. Like. We have a favorite breakfast spot, like a beta roasting, hands down our favorite right, breakfast spot. Right, 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 right. Lunch spot, I don't even know. But uh, honestly, Chimes probably lunch and dinner is is our go to spot. Chimes is just so easy, man. Yeah. So easy. You know my big my big issue with the North Shore so far? I like I love finding spots where you can have good drinks. Food doesn't have to be phenomenal, but like decent food, you know. Um there's not a good Mexican spot. Like anywhere. We should go try the pink agave. Have you been I've, there? I've been there. Yeah, it's nothing it's, special. It's the pink agave. If I had to, you've been to this one, or uh, I've been to uh, the, I've been to both. The one in Ponchatoula is actually pretty good, um, but I've only been once. I I drank a lot of drinks before we ate. I literally just ate ceviche. Like I don't know. I don't know. Um, over here though, like I've been a couple times with the family, and like if I had to. If I had to describe to someone what the pink agave was, it's almost like they walked into like a fun Mexican restaurant, and or, or actually, let me take that back. It's almost like a twenty-three-year-old white girl walked into <laughs> a fun Mexican restaurant and was like, "I want to do this. I could do this." 
And then they just opened up a spot, play Drake music all night long, <laughs> and like put French fries in burritos. <laughs> it's like what? What is this place? <laughs> That's funny, dude. I don't. We've we've been wanting to go just because it opened right by the house, and I wanted to try it. And we go try all the new Mexican restaurants, and I'm like, but it is packed every single night, Monday, Tuesday through Sunday, packed. I'm like, this place has to be something special that it, it is that busy. I, so I had a bad experience at this one over here. If if their drinks, their drinks are good. If their drinks were a tad bit better, I would love it. I think I'm just I'm spoiled to be yeah. honest. I think I'm spoiled. Um, but the the there was the first time I went was was fun. Um, you know we had some good drinks, good music. They had a DJ. It was fun. All he was spinning was Drake. It was weird. <laughs> uh, I mean that too. Like it was <laughs> it was literally either features or like full on Drake songs. I was like, what is happening? Um, the next time we went, it was nothing but like '90s pop. I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> they clearly have themes. Anyways. Um, but one time we went and like the waitress took like 30 minutes to bring me my drink and then like our food came out right after and then she brought us the bill like 10 minutes later and I was like, what, where am I? <laughs> I'm at a fun, like I'm here to have drinks and hang out. Like, I don't know. Yeah. We've never, uh, so far, we're talking about Coretta's inside. Like we go to Coretta's mostly cause it's cheap, quick. Yeah. Uh, there's Garcia's over there that I've heard is good. Um, we haven't tried it. Been there. I want to go there. It sounds yeah. like a fun place. And then um, we went to a place downtown, a little small place downtown. That was good. Couldn't tell you the name of it. I'd have to ask Courtney. Yeah, let and me then know. there's let those me. habanero places that are popping up on every corner. I've never been there I've, either. I've been there too. They're okay. Okay. I think I'd prefer habanero. It depends. If Pink Agave would like just let me hang out and drink, <laughs> I'd probably be like, yeah, whatever. Like I like their drinks better than habaneros, but yeah. well, I don't know. We're at 30 minutes and we've only talked about food. So what else you got on your little list of chicken? Uh, let's talk about chicken. <laughs> no, let's see. Hold on. I had some Popeyes last night. Shit was slap. On Mardi Gras day, you're the fucking. Listen, man, I wasn't Jesus cooking. Christ. I door dashed some uh, Popeyes. <laughs> when you got a pregnant wife that's been craving Popeyes for two weeks, you get her Popeyes. <laughs> you know what's funny? I um also did that when my when my wife was pregnant with Dylan. Um. She wanted Popeyes, and I forgot it was Mardi Gras day because we weren't going anywhere. And I literally, like, I sat in the drive-thru for – I did not. I was like, I know Popeyes is about to be packed. <laughs> I'm yeah. door dashing this shit. It was awful. <laughs> it was awful. But she got what she needed. So, you know, husband of the year. Um, <laughs> the low standards. <laughs> <what>? <laughs> Listen, if you set the bar low – You're right. <laughs> you never fail. You can't – marriage advice. Don't ever try too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Just All right. kidding. All right. Just kidding. <laughs> Don't take my marriage advice. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm. I swear. I'm. Sometimes I swear that my wife hates me, and I. <laughs> I know. I know. Mine does. <laughs> I try. I try. Is it really um, a marriage if you don't hate each other? Sometimes. I don't hate her. She just pisses hate me is, off. Hate is a strong. Right. If they don't. If you don't piss each other <laughs> off every now and then. <laughs> um. All right. Here's a random question. Fun question. What sport would you compete in if you were in the Olympics? Mm. Well, that, we're just assuming I would lose here, right? Well, yeah. Why not? I mean, I'm not going to be a. Uh, I love the I'm idea. Not going to be a sprinter. I love anything. the idea of com- the. I forget what the joke is, but like companies just like drafting people to go to the Olympics instead of actually having teams that practice for it. Like you just get assigned to a sport randomly every year. Like, hey, congrats! Like you're going to be the <laughs> fucking shot putter for the. <laughs> oh, great! Right. <laughs> I, I love the idea of just having a group of friends and just competing in Olympic events. That would be fun. <laughs> it would be a blast. That's You know what? This new fantasy league I'm starting, maybe that's how we decide the draft order. Bar Olympics. Bar, bar, bar Olympics. Bar Olympics makes it better. Uh, what would I want to compete in? Like I said, I'm assuming I would lose. I think I could throw the shit out of a javelin. Maybe. How heavy is a javelin? I have no idea. I can tell you one thing I'm not doing is the hot is the uh, what's the the ju- the thing with the bar with the jump where you stick the bar in the ground and go the fucking catapult. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have a fear of getting stabbed in the chest by that bar when I stick it into the ground. I would not do that. Um, I want to say high jump, but I don't think that's when you it's do not. The, the high the, jump yeah. is just a running. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't think I have like the rhythm for the triple jump. 
I don't think I'd be very good at that. Definitely would. I'd suck at a shot. I've actually done the shot put. I have two. We used to do it in PE in school. I was on the track and field team in middle school, and nice. I threw the shot put. Nice. Um, Shout out. I think I'm a good swimmer. I mean, obviously not Olympic, but I can I can swim pretty well. Water polo. That's my answer. That's, that's what I'm great, going with. That's a great answer. I, that's what I'm going that's with. That's a great water answer. Water polo. We're going to play the shit out of some water polo. <laughs> I love it. What am I doing? I'm like, I'm actually cheating. I'm scrolling through here. I think I'm going to go with, I don't know why, just because this <laughs> is a fun answer. I'm going to go with artistic swimming. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I would, do you know the amount of money I'd pay to see you <laughs> c- compete in artistic swimming? <laughs> I would fail so hard. Do you know how hard that is? Oh, you know, I mean, think, even like it's the same as like water polo. You're literally treading water for however long. There's no way. Dude. It would be impossible. I would no die. Way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I would die also. Um, is it baseball an Olympic sport now? I think so. Hold on, let's see. It, I have no idea. They take, they put stuff in. They take things out. Like I don't know what's an Olympic. I don't want to just say baseball. That's lame. That's a lame answer. Well, I, you I'm can going say with, basketball, I'm, but I'm, like I don't. Yeah, I'm going that. with water polo. I think, I think that would be the most fun. Or like bobsledding. If we're, if, if we, we were, talk, I was going to say, if we do yeah. Winter Olympics bobsledding, that just sounds like a blast. Yeah, I just want to sing a song while we're pushing the damn bobsled. The luge, terrifying. <laughs> uh, yeah. I like I I've always wanted to try to play water polo. Like isn't that one of those sports where in your head you're like I would dominate this shit. And then you try to do it and you're like nope. Yeah. I would dominate in <laughs> a pool with my friends, but we go out and try and actually the do The first like things. 5 times I saw water polo, I assumed they were running on the floor of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> and then I learned that that is not the case. Jesus. Um what other sport just in general do you think like you've never played but you'd be like yeah. And I'm asking this question because I was like, it came to my mind when I was watching Harry Potter. Like, I'd be a dog at Quidditch. It's not a sport. Well, I guess it is technically now. Colleges play it. As a lifelong Harry Potter fan, I think you would upset the others if you said it's not a sport. Okay. I won't say that it's not a sport. We actually, when I worked for the Baby Cakes, we actually hosted a Quidditch team, and they had an on-field, like, Quidditch oh, match. Oh, yeah. I've, I've heard about that. Like, they actually they actually have rules to this shit and What's- play. All right, so give me answer that question, and then I have another one for you. Okay. Uh, what sport do I think I would dominate at if I played? <laughs> I don't know why, but I instantly went to midget wrestling. <laughs> 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 That's the first thing I thought. Of. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I'm going to assume you don't fit the, re- the criteria for that. <laughs> you didn't say I had to fit a criteria. You're right. No, you're right. When you're right, you're right. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying. Uh, I'm gonna go with high lie. What the hell? You know high lie is high lie. So it's a, like a Miami thing. You what know is, those? Um, I'm gonna look it up. This is what I, it? this is what it looks like. You know those things you used to have when you were a kid? Like you got the handle and it's got the little scoop. Yeah, the yeah, ball. yeah. That's what it looks like, and you throw it off a wall, and then it like comes back at you, and it looks fun as shit. I want to play it. I want to like play some high lie. Somebody hook me up. Also, I want to play pickleball. I was gonna. I was actually gonna say pickleball is something I really want to get into, but I don't think I would dominate it. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so high lie. Holy shit, that's spelled really weird. J a i a a l a i. Yeah. Where high did lie. this originate? I don't know. It's big in Miami. I only know that because they talk about it on the Levitard show all the time. First played in the 14th century. Um, it's a sport involving bouncing a ball off a walled-in space by accelerating it to high speeds with a handheld wicker. System. I'm telling you, the thing the thing looks like the uh, that may be what it's from, like what it uh, is based off of. I don't know. It is the fastest game on earth. Whoo, yeah, I'm the ready. Fastest projectile speed in any moving ball game. That is 100 percent a sport where I get out there and I'm like, nope, <laughs> this is, <laughs> I underestimated the speed of this. It's three quarter the size of a baseball and harder than a golf ball, and oh, it moves God. at 188 miles per hour. Yikes! <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, I think I'm changing my mind. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, that is insane. All right, so another question. I'm, what? I'm, I lost my train of thought. What? Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. I have to get this off before I forget it. <laughs> what is a sport like a low, not a major sport? You know, not football, basketball, baseball, that you think you're fairly decent at that people don't necessarily play often or wouldn't expect or 
something. You want me to give you an a- my answer so you get? Yeah, you idea. can. I was gonna. I had a question, but go ahead. Ultimate frisbee. Okay. I was awesome at ultimate frisbee in high school. Ultimate frisbee and then volleyball. Actually, I was pretty good oh, at volleyball. You're tall. Well, yeah, you're it's easier. You're tall too. I know. So, <laughs> so too. Actually, I'm. I have never played. I played volleyball like twice in my whole life. Never played in high school. Like never did the gym stuff. I always played basketball. Um, the only time I ever played volleyball was at the beach, and within five minutes, I was rather good at it. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> I was like, oh okay. Whenever that's the the only reason I ever played like ultimate frisbee or volleyball or whatever is like PE when they would be like random sports. They give you the option to always go play basketball, right? Or you could go play these random sports. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to play the random sport to see if I'm good at it. Ulti- I I loved Ultimate Frisbee because it just felt like I was a receiver in uh in football, <laughs> which I, is what I played. So it was fun as shit. I also have only played Ultimate Frisbee once, uh, twice. We used to when we would do tarp late at night after Baby Cakes games. Um, <laughs> which for anybody who doesn't know, tarp is you have to cover the field um, if it rains, and then contact clues. You have to leave it on. Come on. <laughs> um, or if it's going to rain overnight, you want to make sure you put it on. Sometimes we'd work until two in the morning. Yeah, suck it, bitches. Um, I worked in baseball; it sucked. Um, anyways, that rant's over. We would we played ultimate frisbee twice, and I had never played before in my life. And the first time I caught it, my natural instinct was to keep running. <laughs> and they were like, "Whoa!" And I was like, "Ah, oh, I don't fucking know, dude. Like, I'm just playing so, football out here." Right. Like, so from time to time in PE, we would switch and play ultimate football. Yeah, which is fun. Also, but yeah, ultimate frisbee was a blast. It took me a while to learn how to like really throw a frisbee. It's tough. I, I mean, I got it. I got a lot better at it. Um, and I'm, I'm not talking like everybody can throw a frisbee five feet. Yeah, no, like, but in ultimate frisbee, yeah. like actually throwing yeah, that thing and like they, thirty. They yards. got people. Like, and I'm not like I was good at it, but I wasn't like you know elite at ultimate frisbee. Like them dudes that can get up there and do the different throws. Yeah, crazy. So we had a guy that I worked with that would he like threw me for a loop because the first time he threw it he like cocked back and he threw it over his head like he was throwing a baseball and i was like what the f-? and it was like it just flew and i was yeah. like god damn dude all right teach me a thing or two while we're on this this conversation last question wrap this topic up what sport any sport in the world you could just perfect be a master at what would it be if i could perfect it how yeah. much time do i have to like actually perfect no, it? just you Whatever happened, whatever you got to do, you reach the pinnacle of it. You're just not necessarily the greatest player in the world, so do, but you are you're good enough to where which one like, do I you could want be to be the best people, at, or know? which yeah. one do I think I would be? No, the which best one at? would you want to be the best at? I have my answer. I yeah. think, I think it's basketball, because if you're the best basketball player. There are endless opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even talking like you'd be LeBron or Michael Jordan. Like right. you would just be better than most people, like almost everybody you know at basketball. Yeah. Like professionally though, right? Like, yeah. I'm, like yeah. I'm you'd be a pro- either you'd, the you'd best be or one of the best level. in the yeah. NBA. Like yeah. I'm either Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry. Sure. Like, sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm taking basketball. There, the amount of money you can make. Yeah. Maybe uh, golf. That's Maybe my golf? answer. Golf yeah. is my Sorry, answer. I didn't mean to take your answer. That's my answer. Golf, mostly because it's the sport that pisses me off the most when <laughs> I play it. That's because fair. Because I'm like most, and like not trying to toot my own horn or anything, most sports I play, I'm at least average at. Some I'm, some I'm really good at, but most I'm at least average at. Like anything athletic, just naturally athletic person, average. Golf suck and it pisses me off so much granted what is i've suck? never put like define suck in golf everybody sucks to be fair unless you're on the tour like you probably suck no so like not sucking in golf is being able to go out there like every weekend shoot i don't know if you if you shoot mid 80s you're you're average at golf I Maybe. think you're decent at golf. You should be right. Days. That's why I was asking. Like, what I got a buddy that's stuff. really good, and he's like 70s. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So I think if if I could just like I, me shooting in the nine low 90s, high 80s would be fantastic for me. That'd be the hard. best round of my life. <laughs> right. Like that's fucking. Hard. That's what pisses me but off. If about, you, but if you did play every weekend, that's you, the thing. You eventually. It's hard, man. I was going last year. Like I tried to make it a point to get better at golf, and I just kind of. Like stuff came up, I didn't get to keep yeah. going like I was going. Well, and I, my thing is like if you if I went take lessons and things like that, I think I would get good. But it's so I hate playing golf 
just because it, I suck at it and I hate not being good at something. And it's not even like I'm not good. Like if I was just average, I could accept it. But I go out there and I'm like, all right, this game is bullshit. <laughs> like I've said, this is a whole different conversation that we've never gotten into. Hardest, hardest game in the world. I, I mean, I think I agree. Like golf is very hard. Golf is very hard. Mm-hmm. I actually love golf. Um, and I'm That's, not, I'm not good at it's it. It's a weird relationship with golf. I hate it because I suck at it, but I love it. I, I love it. Um. But I also like, and that's why I was asking, like, what's bad? I think I am somewhat like just naturally good at golf. Not not good, not good at all. When I say good, I mean like I could I could walk out of my house tomorrow and maybe shoot like high nineties without having played in like Let's a think, year. I've never broke a hundred, oh. under a hundred. I like, mean, it's it's t- it's not like I will like do it. One hundred five is probably I, my best. Round. I could also go shoot one twenty. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like it's <laughs> it is what it is. Um. But I think if I played, that's one sport. I think if I played every weekend, I would I would probably consistently shoot low nineties. Yeah, break the eighties. I'd be every okay. I, honest to God, I'd be okay with break eighty, <laughs> like every so often. Yeah. I would be happy with golf, but it's just, it's the one that pisses me off the most, and I just wish I could be good at it overnight. <laughs> it's actually something. I have a buddy who's been. He just uh, he just reached out to me. It's an old golf buddy of mine. We went to high school together too. Um, we used to play golf all the time. He reached out to me. He's like, "Hey, dude, I want to start going to play golf again. I haven't played in forever. Me I'm too. hitting the range. Let's go." And I'm like, I was, go- right, I, dude, dude I was going two or three times a week to the range. I was driving down the Royal and Slidell, which is like 20 minutes from it's here. Too far. It's really not. We don't have any driving ranges out here. Yeah. It's, so this is where I had to drive to. Loft 18 is going to open. It's not a driving range. Yeah. But. I mean, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I was going once a week, and then they got a couple apps where you can get rounds of golf for like 12 bucks for times nobody wants to play, and I just go play by myself, and I was getting better. I was like late night, just YouTube video after YouTube video. Jesus, I was having fun. I bought a uh, I bought the little net from my backyard, and then it broke mm. when I tried to pick it back up. So that was just not long lived. <laughs> I have I have been thinking about picking that back up. Um, we should. We'll talk about that. You know what? When we get our new podcast. camera, that could be one of our uh, <laughs> become a golf podcast. Well, not even a golf podcast. It's just people like behind. Hate us. They're gonna be like, why Listen, do I follow we, these people? If we pay for a good camera, we're gonna get a lot of content out of it. <laughs> We'll just be like the douche bros on the golf course doing dumb shit and yeah. kicked out of golf courses. It'll be terrible. Uh, um, I don't have anything else. Although it does look like the Broncos interviewed Matt Patricia for the team's defensive coordinator position. What is Sean Payton doing? Um, well, it's better than what Belichick was doing because Belichick had him as an offensive coordinator last year. Hey, listen, we don't question the mad genius. Listen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Who the fuck thought that was a good <laughs> idea? I don't know, man. He was like, yep, throw shit at a wall, hope it sticks. <laughs> I, I, I have no clue. Like, I remember when they announced that. it was They were co-coordinators, though. Who else? I forget who the other I have was. no idea. Um, and I was like, what? He's a defensive guy, isn't he? Like, he's literally, he used to be your defensive coordinator. What, how did this yeah. happen? Didn't that happen in Philly years ago? Years ago, when Andy Reid was still there. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't know. Um, That's all I got. You want to end with something fun? Sure. I mean, the whole podcast has been fun, but sure. That's all right. We talked food the whole time. I am wearing a Southern's chicken sandwich shirt. Um, This actually came out during the pandemic. Shout out to my family. Um, They actually run run Southern. Shout out to Anthony, Rhiannon. Love y'all. They're not a partner of ours or anything. I'm just being nice. Um, What is your – you remember – what was it? Two years ago, pre-pandemic, three years ago, they had the chicken sandwich craze, mm-hmm. and everybody was like arguing about the best chicken sandwich. What's your What's your go-to chicken sandwich? Fun fact: during that time, I literally tr- went to everywhere that had a, f- a chicken sandwich and tried them all. Okay, so give me give me your. I'm talking. Well, we're talking fast food. Just in general, it can be any chicken mm-hmm. sandwich you've ever had. Oh, that Nessie! Now you're getting tough. If you want to, when I say, when I say what food. I did, I went to the fast food ones. Okay, I'm I'll not, give two dude, answers then. The Popeyes one was up there. It's it's good. I, that might have been my favorite. Um, who? Ha- I'm trying to think. Of- All right. So, worst canes. Mm. Not e- and mostly because it's hardly a chicken sandwich. You just throw chicken tenders on the on the thing. Get give me something else with it. Um, if you slather it in cane sauce, it's much better. It no, of course, but it's I don't like just make a chicken breast. I don't. I yeah, don't like it's just the, three tenders and some yeah. sauce. Or and, you have like the best bread. Put it between some t- two of your breads and 
let's rock and roll. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, the Popeyes one was go-to Cane's order, by the way, was the chicken sandwich, sandwich between between Texas toast. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's different right there. Um, I th- I like the Popeyes one, man. I think the Popeyes one was the best. Chick Fil A's is good, but it's I don't know something about the Chick. I like I like some crunch to my chicken sandwich. Yeah, you know, I get a I get a black and chicken club sandwich from Chimes. That's elite. The the uh, the T Bird. Is the T yeah, bird? That's good too. Oh, it's got avocado on it though. You're not an avocado. Not guy. take it off. Take the avocado off. <laughs> um, I think for me, if we're talking purely fast food, if we're talking purely fast food. It was definitely. It you can't say it now because Popeyes has changed. They've changed their chicken sandwich. I don't care what anybody says. It's I've, a different chicken sandwich. I had it the one time when it first came out. Never had it again. It was delicious. I was gonna never say had it again. So we had it. I was I was working in the in the garden district um for a tech company and i was on a sales team and we had a spiff where it was like whoever does x y and z i'm gonna go buy you i will wait in that damn line and i will buy you a popeye's chicken sandwich like three of us did what was asked our manager went he was in line for like two hours and he comes back with these sandwiches and it was like two weeks into the to the hype and they were phenomenal i was like holy shit like this is actually really good um Chick Fil A is always like can't miss, like consistent. Like it is good, it is good. I'm like I'm not saying it's not good, but if we're ranking them, I I prefer the crunch. Of yeah, the, uh, no, I definitely. I feel healthier when I eat a Chick Fil A chicken sandwich than anywhere else. <laughs> Something about Chick Fil A, man. It's, that's, it's, that's, it's just the way they serve it to you. That's God's chicken, man. Don't the sleep, Wendy's chicken sandwich me. underrated. I feel that. I used to eat a lot of Wendy's back in my day. I used um, to work at Wendy's. I used to get home styles all the I, time. <laughs> I hated on fast food last week, and here we are just loving all over. Also, side note, anybody who thought last week I was shitting on Taco Bell specifically, I was not. They were just the one that came up because of what happened that night. Taco Bell's food, probably my go-to when I'm eating fast food. I'm going to be honest. Just throw whatever the fuck you want in a bag, and I'm going to eat it because it's Taco Bell. Um, and we're going to leave it at that. Um Outside of the the Popeye's chicken sandwich, though, I was going to say Southern's chicken sandwich, dude. And this isn't because it's family or anything. Like, phenomenal. Phenomenal. That one. And then, obviously, the Blue Oak. The Blue Oak chicken sandwich. Never had the Blue Oak chicken sandwich. It's so good. It's so good. That's it. So you want to start a a little side pod where we just go try all the chicken sandwiches in the world? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm with it. Let's go. Let's do it. Had, what was our other idea? We had another idea of going to try a certain, a it, certain food. Was it King Cake or Po', po Boys? Or po Boys. That's what po it was. Boys? It certainly wasn't King Cake. Why would I ever do that? Yeah. Patty and Dave eat who effing knows. Or yeah, who effing, I, I like we'll, that. We'll come up with something. Yeah. That could work. A little behind the scenes. We're working on getting a better camera. And Patty said he might want to try some uh, out and about videos. Yeah, we're going so. to get out eventually. Don't don't hold us to this like next week because that ain't happening. No. He won't even be around. You'll just no. be looking at me. Yeah. I don't know. There may be somebody else here next week. I we'll don't know. See. We'll see. I'm open. You do what you got to do. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to have my wife on. Yeah. All right, babe. Well, tell me about... Uh, she don't should, fucking know. She should come on and just pretend to be me. <laughs> We're going to talk about decorating our house for an hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> great. Uh, That's it. Let's let these poor folks go. If you listen this long, we love you. We really do. I appreciate everyone who ever comments, likes, follows, all that stuff. Um, people that text me on the side, even if you don't comment on anything or any of that, I, I really appreciate it. Friends, family, strangers, Same. stick around. Um, if this one wasn't good for you, trust me, the next one's going to be totally different. Who fucking knows? Indeed. Yeah. Um, Second everything you just said. You can follow me. If you don't, you probably do. At the Patty V, follow Dave. At the Dave Rainey. Um, follow us um, at Who F and Knows. Literally everywhere. Um, we've been better. Dave's been better, I should say, uh, lately. Um, to no help of my own, posting on all the different socials. Um, you come with the topics. I do the posting. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we. That's how sure. this works. I'm not doing a good job on my end. Um, yeah, you can also follow uh, the No at the No or at B in the No. I always mix that up. Yeah. Um, it's the No dot com. So. Uh, we have two partners. Should we shout out our partners? Go for it. Yeah. Um, so Nola Flight Gaming um, is a partner of ours. Um, big shout out to them. Um, good guys over there. Um, partners doing big of things. the No. Partners of the No. Which? Yeah, not specifically the podcast, but, you know, we're a part of the No Network, so we'll shout it out. Um, and then also, oh, shoot, what was the other one? Um, it's it's brand new, and it's not one that, that we were. Uh, Jacob's Audible? Yes. Yes. Is it Jacob's Audible? I don't want to get that wrong because that would be terrible to get that wrong. Um, it is, it is Jacob's audible way to go. 
Um, but yeah, they empower parents uh, of caretakers of ASD children to live life to the fullest. So um, pretty cool, pretty cool thing. Um, our um, our partner Ethan, and when I say partner, I guess our you know the no, he runs the no, the originator. Yeah, um, the OG does a lot of work with them. So um, I hear great things about them, and obviously it's a great cause. So go check them out. Yep. That's all we have. That's all we got. Yeah. I got nothing else for you, buddy. Uh, I will see you all next week. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? Deuces. Later.